Hello, maps. Welcome to literacy lesson for today. Today is a special day. We are going to spend some time looking at the end papers of several of the books that we have read so far in our lesson. Now, maybe you've encountered these end papers and you haven't even realized what they are, but maybe you have gleaned some information from the book without even knowing it. So today we're going to take an intentional look at illustrate the way that illustrators use end papers to show inf important information in the book. All right, Mavs, go ahead and get your bow and arrow out. On two, one, two, I can notice and understand how the book's end papers are connected to the meaning of the book. Woo! All right, team. So today we're going to take a look first at the book, The Gardener. So you may, you may recall this story. It's been a while and I want you to take a look. I'm going to take you through the book and show you the way in which you would find these end papers. All right. So this is the book, The Gardener. Okay. And I want you to take a look. So we, if you recall this story, it was written kind of like a letter, which was a neat structure. Um, obviously, it's a chronological store, story because it happens in order, so you can kind of, um, I know we've been spending some time talking about structure. So you can see it kind of goes through July 4th, 1936. You see all of this amazing change that is taking place. All right, so right here is an important part of the book, right? Let's read this last paragraph. On the last page of the story, Lydia finds out that she is going to go home to live with her parents again. Now, even though this is the last page of the story and the last page in the book, let's take a look at the pages that come after this part of the story. What do you see on these pages? What do you see? What do you think is happening? Right here on this page. What do you think might be happening? After the story has ended, but the illustrated ha illustrator has continued to share the story with the illustrations. And we call these, the formal term is called the end papers because they are the, they come after the end of the story and they were done by an illustrator to continue on and to give you more information about the book that you're reading. Let's take a look on this page. What do you notice is happening on this page? Why do you think that the author or illustrator included this illustration in its end paper? What do you think? Right, you can see the cats. You can see some letters kind of coming here. It looks like they're going off almost into a field, perhaps. You could infer or predict that they might be going to do some of their own planting and writing. All right, Mavs. So let's go back to our questions. What do you see on those pages? Right, we just saw a lot. We kind of had a chance to get a glimpse of what happens after that last letter that lets Lydia know that she's going to be going home to live with her parents again. Okay, so what did you see? I see or I think. What did you think was happening on those pages? All right, Matt. So the page in a book after the words is called the end paper. Now they most often do not have any words on them, but they often have a photograph or an illustration that is showing and continuing that story so that that author can paint a picture or the reader can paint a picture in their own mind about what is happening next in the character's life. So the end paper in this book show what happens to Lydia Grace after the story ends. 
So you are going to find out, and we're going to find out today, that end papers can show just about anything um, that the illustrator wanted to continue. So let's go through to our chart right here so we can start, start to note some of our thinking. So when we look and we understand that illustrators use end papers to show important information about the book, what do the end papers in the gardener show? Yes, right, the end papers in the gardener showed what happened, right? Lydia's at the train station and it shows that Lydia is starting a new garden with her grandmother. Now, why is this important? Why do you think the illustrator chose to do this end paper. Yes, the illustrator wanted to do this because they know that you care about the character, right? And they want to let you know what happens to the character after you've built this relationship in the book, right? It gives you this idea and hope and expectation for a new future for the character. So that could be one reason that illustrators include end papers in their writing. Let's go on to our next book. All right, Matt. So we're going to go in and I'm going to bring you into my book as well so that you can see all of the great So on this, we're going to ask the same questions. What do you see on these pages? And what do you think is happening? I see and I think. So just like before, I'm going to take you through this story, Honey, Honey, Lion. <laughs> so remember, we have Honey Guide, the Badger. I'm going to picture walking you a little bit about what happens, right? And revisiting some of these things. So we're in a Lion, Lion, Lion! Badger turned on his tail and ran. Swish, swish, through the grass. Clickety click into the papyrus. Boom, boom, over the hollow log. Sprung over the termite mound. Splish, splash across the water hole. Pitter patter over the baobab boots. Badger dashed into his burrow. And this is the last page of the book. That even evening, mongoose. To elephant who trumpeted to hippo who bellowed to warthog who squealed to bishop bird who piped to hyena who whooped to zebra who snorted to giraffe who was overheard by guinea hen who buggled it far and wide it was the bush telegraph and it said if honey guard leads you to a beehive be sure and reward her or next time she will lead you to a lion now notice this is the last page of the story and my next page is a blank page. That tells me my story is done. However, there is another end paper. What do you see on this end paper? What do you see? I see elephants, the hyenas, the giraffes, the lion. Whoa. I think, what do you think? I think that these are all of the animals that Badger and Honey Guide encountered during the book. Okay, and of course we know that Jan Brett um, loves to tell a lot of her story on the side pictures of her book. And that's for another lesson, but something else. All right. So what did you notice? Well, we noticed that all of these um, animals that were encountered in the story show up in the end paper of the book. Kind of lets you know that all of these events happened, and in the end, they're all together, and they're all kind of a part of this story and Mother Nature. So let's go ahead and go back to our chart. So what did the end paper show? Well, we know that they showed the different animals, the zebra, the giraffe, the elephant, all of those animals that were encountered throughout the book. It showed you 
them at the very end after the story had ended. Now, why? Why did they do that? Why are these important? Well, these are the animals that Honey Guide and Badger encountered. So it showed you all of these animals and it kind of brings you all the way back to the story because you have these memories and experiences with each of the animals that you encountered. All right, Maz, let's go ahead and let's do one more. Let's look at Think of an Eel. Let's try it. We're going to find and we're going to go to the end papers together and we are going to see what do we notice and then we are going to think about why the author and the illustrator put these this picture on the end papers. What was the purpose or why is this photo or illustration important? And Maz, I want to make sure that you are doing all of this hard thinking at home, even when we're not together to share all of our, our thinking out loud. Okay, Maz. So this is the last page of the story. And this is the last paragraph. Imagine this eel leaf and millions like him, or millions just like him, swimming on waves across the wide sea. So this is the last actual page of the story. This is the last page of the story. And we are going to look at the end paper. Wow, Mavs. What do you see here? And what do you remember about this story? I notice, go ahead and share, what do you notice about this illustration? You can kind of see the cycle goes in, right? Yes. Great job, Maz. Yeah, we noticed that it kind of takes you from all of the stages and all of the cycles in an eel's life. So let's go back to our chart. What did the end paper show? Well, of course, in this case, they showed an eel at different times in its life. But what is the purpose? Why would they do that at the end? Why would the illustrator do that? Why would they think that that was an important thing to show? Well, Mass, this was almost, if you recall, right, this was an it was a fictional story, but it had the nonfiction elements. So the author wanted to do this so that you can be reminded of all the things that you're learning in about the eel's life. Right? It's really important. So it kind of takes you full circle. Like this was the story that you learned. And here's what you can know and understand after you are done reading this story. So the end papers are really important, right? Because they really help us to be leaders and understand the whole book. So what are end notes? What are the end papers? Well, end papers show photos of something important in the book. Sometimes they might show, like in the case of a gardener, what happens after the story ends. Or sometimes they might remind you, they might bring you back to the book and help you to remember all about what you just learned in the case of um, Honey, Honey, Lion and Life of an Eel, right? The, the Life of the Eel, they wanted to remind you of all of the stages of Life of the Eel. And then Honey, Honey, Lion, they want you to remember all of the animals that were encountered, encountered in this story. Now, readers, now it is your turn to take this new learning and go and find the end papers in your book. Notice today if there are end papers that show pictures of something important in one of the books that you read. And I really want you to think about why these photos are important and bring that book with you to share when you respond to your reading lesson today. I know that not all books have end notes and I know they might not have all of these text features, but here's my challenge to you readers. I want you to go out and I want you to search. I want you to look through the books that you have in your home. What, where can you find books that have end papers? 
could you go to the library? Could you pick up some books from the library? I know you can check them out online and pick them up and they bring them right to your car, which is super duper awesome. So that is a really good way if you're kind of limited on, you've read all the books in your house and you're ready for something new. Additionally, you know you could always go to Mac and Via and Epic to look for more inspiration and to try to search for books with EndNotes so that you can apply this and new learning from today. All right, readers, I am so excited to see what you find and what you can share. Happy reading, Mavs.